Welcome back to Trading Wars. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, my friends. Today was an awesome day. I uh, made a lot of money actually on my small account challenge. Um, I want to talk about some fibs. There were some nice, clean Fibonacci plays today. I'm going to break it all down to you step by step. All right, my friends. So if you're ready, let's step into the war zone. So this is also part two of the Fibonacci mastermind. And yes, uh, yesterday I gave you a lesson on the early morning plays and the intraday um, at the open. So we're going to look at the afternoon today and we're going to look at swing trading as well. Okay, so let's get right into it. Let me do some shout outs and we'll step into the war zone. So Doc, what's going on? Nasdo, Thundercat, Collecto, what's going on? STK, Trading Wars Army, what's going on, brother? Dr. D, Briggs, Trading Wars Army, Dane, Trading Wars Army, Thunder, Carlos, Josh, Motivate Sage, Trading Wars Army, Deepak, Gringo, Loco, Trading Wars Army, Jay Villa, good to see everyone, all right? So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go back to my Twitter. And um, in May, so on May 27th, guys, I posted this tweet here that um, I went long um, using one micro NASDAQ contract. Okay. And at the time, so we're going to go ahead and replay this, um, back, uh, back to where I got in. And I want to just talk to you about how you can use Fibonacci to swing trade and also for long-term investing. Okay. So the first thing is, let me go ahead and just show you guys. So right now here, guys, on my small account challenge, I posted this today. I took this account basically from $1,000 to currently 4,120. Actually, let me just check right now because I think it's up a little bit more. Um, and the way that I did this guys was swing trading futures contracts. So I'm at $4,310 right now on this one contract. Okay. So my entry was 11,292. So I'm going to mark this on the chart and I'm going to show you how I use Fibonacci for long-term plays and swing trading, et cetera. Okay. So 11292, I'm just going to write this down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this so we can keep it here for future reference. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hit the replay and then I'm going to talk to you about the reason why I got in for this long, longer term play and how you use Fibonacci to do it. Okay. So the first thing is whenever you want to make a decision for the long run, you need to go to the higher time frames. Okay. You don't make decisions for the long run based on the three minute chart or the five minute chart. Those are all short term patterns can make you great money day trading. But when you want to hold something for, let's say, multiple years or you want to go for bigger plays, you need to look at the higher time frames. OK, so Fibonacci, just like I was teaching you yesterday, the beauty of the Fibonacci is that it works on all time frames. So from the five minute, the 30 second, all the way up to the weekly and the monthly chart, there is Fibonacci happening. OK, and what we're going to do here is we have the we have the intersection of two major Fibonacci back in uh, early June and late May. OK, so the first thing we could see is that from the highs uh, of the beginning of the year, we had pushed down, we pulled back. And then we traded straight down in this Fibonacci pattern. So this right here is a typical Fibonacci leg. You push down, you pull back, you trade to an extension so we can take a Fibonacci right there. So let me just. That. So we can take a Fibonacci and we can put it on this leg. Here's our high. Here's our low. And then we can draw the golden zone. So where's the golden zone? It's from the 50 to the 786. So there's the golden zone. That's where the short uh, came in. So here's that first push from the algorithm. The algorithm gets right back in on the 618. So they have a good risk reward with that. It's exactly how we traded, guys, on the two-minute chart, three-minute chart. It's the same thing. So here's your confirmation candle. You have that inverted hammer. It breaks out the low, takes it right back down. And then our golden zone for the completion is right here. So this is the same thing that I do on a five-minute chart. I'm doing it on the weekly chart. And what this allows me to do is to take bigger plays, longer-term holdings. So when we came down here, it, you, you could see um, my entry was on the white line, so I didn't get the very bottom. But what I did was I said, OK, I want to see what's going to happen. How is price going to react when we're into this golden zone? So what I did here, guys, in the golden zone is I waited for a daily chart confirmation candle. So right here, you guys see that inside bar. So once that inside bar closed, I said, all right, I'm going to go long here and I'm going to go for the opportunity that this is the leg of the bear that's completed. And if I zoom out and I just take a bigger picture, look at this, if we go all the way from the COVID low 
and I take it all the way back up here, you could see that we had just tagged the 50. So 50% of 2020 big rally, that's also a confluence. So I had a confluence with this FIB and then the bigger FIB, and that's what gave me confidence. So I got long right here, 11,296, right? Sorry, 11,292, 11,296 was, the, was the, uh, the inside bar, okay? So I got in a little bit before it closed. Then we popped up right here. And on this part right here, guys, I was very close to getting stopped out. I did move my stop loss to break even um, right when we were coming back down. And the way I did it is I took the FIB from the low to the high. And I saw that my stop, my uh, break even was right below the 786. So I left, I moved my stop to break even. So you always have to be tactical when you're taking these plays. Um, you know, because if it does break down here and goes lower, guess what? You could get back in again. All right. So from there, guys, we start to rally. Um, we chopped around a little bit. And then finally, we are now right here. Okay. So that is how you use the Fibonacci on the higher time frames. Okay. And using the higher time frames, guys, what you can do is basically get bigger plays. So how many points did I make here on, on this? contract. So I made, let's say 2000 points. Okay. So 2000 points. So let me show you the power of 2000 points on the NASDAQ. So I'm opening up my broker here. So, so if you have interactive brokers, what you can do is you can go to your broker and you can type in NQ. Okay. That's going to be the e meaning future. So every point on NQ is $20. So every point is $20. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just get a calculator real quick and I'm going to show you some differences. Okay, so here's a calculator. So every point is 20 bucks times 2000. Okay, so if I did a full contract, I would have made 40K. But what I did, and because I wanted to prove to you guys about the small accounts and I wanted to show you a small account challenge, what I did instead was I did one micro contract. So a micro contract is one tenth of this. So that's how I'm up about 4,300 right now. Okay. And it cost me only uh, roughly $1,000 to hold that contract. Okay. And while I went through this guys, while I went through going through this right here, I went through a lot of trolling, a lot of abuse, a lot of people hating on me on Twitter. And those same people are asking me for advice right now. You know, and that's how the world works is you stick to your guns and you die fighting for what you believe in. Okay. And I was a believer in my fibs and I'm, I'm grateful for this gain here. And I just want to tell you guys, never let other people get into your head, follow your plan. Okay. If I wasn't so focused on what other people were thinking, the other part of my plan was supposed to be to add on this dip and this dip, which I didn't do. And, um, I guess mentally things got to me. But you could clearly see here, guys, we had some, this right here was a golden zone buy, 50 to the 786 right there. So I missed adding those two levels. Not going to kill myself about it, but I'm going to be more focused for next time. So what my goal here with this contract is what I'm trying to do is I'm going to keep looking for opportunities now moving forward to add to this position. Okay. I want to add to this position and I want to try to do the same thing that I did for the ES. So for the S and P 500, I took 5,000 into 80,000 doing the same strategy here with the FIBS and with the micro contracts. And once you get enough cushion, like you see, I have a $4,000 cushion. I could take that cushion and I can roll it into new contracts. So I'm taking my unrealized gains and putting it into new contracts, or I could cash out. But by putting it into new contracts, I increase my leverage and then I can go for home runs. So what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks is I'm going to be looking for another opportunity to add to my NQ right here and see if I can go for another big challenge. And I just, I really thought, I personally thought that since I was able to take this 1000 and I documented the whole thing on Twitter. So the 1000 to the $4,000, uh, I really, really thought guys that it was going to be big. Like I thought it was going to be big. I thought that all the people that were doubting me would be like, man, you did a good job. Like I thought it was going to be revolutionary because I, I showed my whole journey and I showed it on YouTube too. But I just realized that after like no one really cares um, because, you know, that's the way this game is. But 
that's why it's so important to never never do things for what other people are telling you in the market or, or you know, getting confused by what you read. Do what you know is right for you. Follow your strategy till the end. That way you'll never look back and have regret. And that's the biggest thing. The worst thing is living with regret. All right, so that was my swing strategy. I want to start something off a little bit different with the futures, but the measured move completion, measured moves means once you have that first leg developing, you use the measured move. So you use the extension. So this part here is an extension. You use this extension to try to find where can we turn. So this is how you use Fibonacci for reversals. Okay, so hit me with a 10 if you followed me right there. So, all right. So good stuff, guys. I appreciate you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back and we're going to go start from the beginning with SPY today. And I'm going to walk you through everything step by step. So I'm going to go ahead here and hit the replay. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is draw the high and the low. Here's our high. Here is our low. Okay. So the first candle comes in, we have a massive gap, up, right? Obviously we had some CPI, blah, blah, blah. We don't care. We don't care what the news is, but look at the price action. When the first candle of the day comes in, we know what we need to do. That's it. We don't let ourselves get caught up in anything. Okay. Don't ever let yourself get caught up. You follow your system. You follow the chart, you follow the price action. So the first candle was a big bearish candle. Um, that opened here. So the first trade that I took here, guys, was the opening range breakout. So with the opening range breakout, it's not a Fibonacci trade, but I use the Fibonacci's to help me with my targets on the trade. So Mike is bugging. Give me a second here. You guys hear me all right? Hit me with a two. Are we back? Are we okay? My bad. I don't know if it's... I don't know if I did something. I think I was hitting the mic actually because I, I'm talk, I talk with my hands. So I think I was hitting the mic with my hand. <laughs> I think that's what was happening. I'm trying to like, I'm over here sitting down by my computer. I got my monitors here and I'm like trying to explain this to you guys and I'm doing my hands and I'm like going like crazy and I'm hitting my mic. <laughs> All right. Anyways, so let's go back to the morning commentary. Let me walk you through what I did today. So the first thing here, good morning, good morning. Let's focus now. No more speculation. Trade the price action in front of you only. Um, so option premiums will be very high today. So I'll be focusing on futures contracts. And that was very important because right in the morning, guys, especially on a big gap, the premiums on options are going to be expensive. Options are a great tool. But you need to know when to use them. You can't use them when they're overpriced. Overpriced options will lead you bankrupt. Okay. Because um, the issue is, if you trade overpriced options and there's a lot of uh, premium on them, and if they don't make a big enough move, let's say it goes sideways or it goes slightly lower, slightly higher, you'll still lose money, right? So that's why I said, all right, today I'm going to focus on futures contracts. I'm going to show you guys how you could have easily taken it with futures instead of options, okay? So right here, guys, we got short at 934, send the red, and we got a first target at 417.20. So I'll show you. Here is the first candle. So what I what I do with the orb to make it um, very methodical is I use a Fibonacci on the opening range breakout. So I take a high to low like this, okay, like that. So first candle comes in right there, boom. So there's our entry short. So let's talk a little bit about this candle, All right? So we went short once we broke this low. And right away, guys, you see this wick up here? This wick allows me to take my stop loss from up here and bring it down here so I have protection. So this is this is how I manage these trades, right? So I got it there. And then from there, the first target is the 272. That's where I'm trying to get to. So we've got here, boom. So within this candle, we tag the 272. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go down to a one minute so you can see it. So there we go. Okay. So we break the low, we tag our 272 right there. And then we go down a little bit lower here to the 50. So right here, once we make the, once we broke this low and we made a new low, this is when I got my stop loss to break even. Because if this was really going to flush, okay, if this was going to really flush, it's, it was supposed to flush right there. So what I did is I took my uh, 272. When we made a new low, I covered some more. Then I got the stop to break even. So I was being very tactical today because um, with big gaps can also come a lot of traps, 
a lot of chop. Okay. So from here, right here, you can see first target nailed, next target, slow moving morning so far. We'll keep this position open for a bit. And if we chop more, just kill it. So got a first target, max stop loss for 1836. Um, and then here we go. New low of day, no greed, lock in most. I covered most here, just have a runner with break even stop. And that runner came back right here. And we got stopped out on the remainder. So that was really, really tactical. And let me show you using futures contracts, how that can, like how much points they have there for potential, okay? So I'm gonna go to ES here. We're gonna find the same candle. Here's your 930 right here, okay? So so this is the same bar that we were trading here on SPY. So futures, SPY, they're both the S&P 500, but futures has the overnight price action. You won't see that on SPY because SPY is regular trading hours. So here's our first candle, 930. So same thing, okay? So here's our high. Here's our low. All right. So let's walk. So let me walk you through this. So the first partial target right here, guys, is around three points. And then the second one here is roughly five points. Okay. And then I got the stop loss to break even. So let's say you come out on that trade with at least three points. Okay. So let's say you get three points at a minimum. So what can three points do for you? Does anybody know how much dollar value is getting that three point short? How much dollar value is that? Let me see if you guys have been paying attention here. So what do you guys think? How many points can you make on th three points? How much cash can you make on that? What, what do you get per point? What is it? So that's $150 on one full contract and $15 on a micro. So it's $150. It's $50 per point per contract. Or if you do micro, it's five per point per contract, right? So the micro is obviously, if you have a small account, that's where you got to start, but you work your way up until this side. So, and now let's go back here. And I want to just show you why I didn't trade the options. Let me ask you this question. From this move from here to here, could you have made money on options? What do you think? Could you have made money on options from here to here? What do you guys think? Tell me. What are your thoughts? How much percentage gain could we have made there on option contracts? So here's the thing with options. When the premium is extremely pricey, like what we have here on gaps, if your fill is bad, you're not going to make money. You won't. You won't make money. This move is not enough. That move right there is not enough for the contract to move. It's not. So that's why I really want to just, you know, I learned about futures and the, there's a the right time to use futures is the right time to use options. Okay. So I want to open your, your eyes to these different trading tools. Obviously everything's, everything comes with risk, right? Everything does. doesn't matter what you do. You could cross the road and there's a risk. You're going to get hit by a car. You need to protect yourself with stop losses and you need a paper trade, do the hundred trade challenge until you're profitable. Then you can consider risking your money. But I just wanted to show you that there guys. All right. All right. So the brother said, I made 24 bucks with three contracts in the money. Okay. So compare that 24 bucks with going three minis. Let's say you did three minis. That's 45 bucks. Okay. All right. So go ahead here, guys. Hit me with a six. Did you understand the first play of the day? That was the opening range breakout. Did you understand that first play of the day? Yeah. So in the discord, um, in the discord here, our, our fibs. Okay. Um, you'll see here with the fibs that we use futures. So these are all futures based. Okay. It's the same candles as spy. So it's up to you if you want to use options, because look with options, you can use a cash account. So a lot of people like doing that, but I recommend like when I say in the morning, so remember what I said in the morning here, right? Option premiums will be very high today. I will be focusing on futures contracts. So I try to let you guys know when it's the right time to use options. Options are great when we're going for lottos, when we're going for uh, consolidation, and then we're looking for breakouts. Those when two or three days in a row, we've been going sideways. Those are the best times to use the options. All right. I use interactive brokers. They have, uh, you can open a, um, a demo or you can also do it on thinkorswim. 
yeah, futures contracts are the most liquid in the world. S&P 500 futures contract is the most liquid in the world. And that's why I look in my book here, Spy Options Mastery. I talk about stocks, futures, options, and the instruments I use. In this section of the book, I talk about the pros and cons and everything that you guys are asking in the chat right now, I, I go through it in the book. All right. So if you're looking for a little bit more information. Okay. So from there, we had the first leg of the day. We had this high to low right here. And we did short on the 786 right there, guys, and got a little bit unlucky today because we poked, we made a new high, got stopped out, and then we ran right back down. So a little bit unfortunate on that um, fit play. It did end up working. You'll see right here. Did end up doing what we wanted to do. But, you know, whenever you have big news events or anything like this, there is a chance you're going to get stop run. So unfortunately, we did short right here under 786. And we got stopped out. We got poked out. So, you know, there's nothing you could do about that. But we had a tight stop loss. And you'll see on the very next play, we're able to recover that. So unfortunate here, we got poked out. Um, but once we got poked out here, you could see we made a new high of day. So once we made a new high of day, we went ahead and we drew the Fibonacci the other way for the bull. Low to high right here. And then you could see the algorithm came in right here on the 618 and took us right back up. So we're able to get, get back in on this leg. So once we got stopped out on this one, we took this one. This one took us right back up. Nice game. Um, and it's unfortunate that the first one got poked out. Um, a little bit unfortunate, but um, what can you do? So let me just go ahead here and show you. Getting poked out, getting stock hunted is a part of the game. You have to factor that in. Um, that is definitely something that does happen. So here we go. Here was the morning leg here. And you could see here, this is when we did our short. And then we got poked out. And then we immediately drew up the other side right here. And we're able to get long on the 618. Okay. So you can see right here, 618 filled long, boom, back up to 5382 hit, first target met, send energy for the bull out low. So luckily, we had that little Fibarama, boom, boom, okay? And one of, uh, one of the legs that was underrated today is a special leg right here in the Fibonacci book that I call the opposing leg. And I'm going to show you this today. This should actually be for tomorrow, um, but I'm going to show you a sneak peek today about this leg. And this is a leg, if you want to wait as a sniper, um, if you just want to wait as a sniper and you want to sit there and wait for this leg, you can. This is called the opposing leg. So the opposing leg is when you have a Fibonacci that's trading. So you could see we had this Fibonacci right here. The 618 was trading. Then what you do is you draw the other side. So the other side now is from this high to this low. And you can see right here, guys, this one was picture perfect pretty. And we would have taken this one if we weren't already long. Right. And so we came in here, guys. This was really nice. I mean, it, this one, guys, it, it, I could I could marry this trade and I'll tell you why. We hit the 786 one, two, three, four times. And we put in this pattern right here. This pattern is my confirmation pattern. It's called the Ragnarok. It's one of the rarest patterns that I use. It's an inside, outside, inside. So the Ragnarok right there, guys, it's extreme consolidation, extreme trapping. So we had the Ragnarok confirmation showing that we're trapping all these traders here. Once we broke that low, we took out that low, boom, we flushed, right, we flushed back down. All right, so that was our morning right off the bat. So unfortunate for this one right here, but we're able to catch it back there. So hit me with a seven if you guys are following me. You guys follow me there? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to talk about the easier play of the day, which is called the afternoon leg. Okay, so I'm going to show you that one. And that was the last play of the day that we had. All right, so I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to uh, zoom in a little bit here. Okay, I took that play, $125 on a bracket play on MES Futures. Congrats, brother. Dane, shout out to you, brother. Appreciate that. All right, so from here, now I'm going to switch over to the five. So I'll show you here, right here. This was our afternoon leg. So this is, we drew it up at 1116. So let me show you how that works. So the afternoon leg, what I like about this one and what you'll like about this is it's a little bit slower. In the morning, you're going back and forth, back and forth. It's crazy. It's fast. It's fun. It's amazing. You can make a lot of money. In the afternoon, things slow down, especially when you go into the 11 to 1 o'clock, you start to get into the chop zone. You start to get into... Um, basically lunchtime hours, lighter volume, all these things start to happen. And right when you have that period, some people are um, discouraged. Like, I don't want to trade this. It's choppy, blah, blah, blah. But if you use the fibs, what you can do is start dissecting that like a, like a surgeon. And you can use that to your edge here. So let me show you. 
So we came in here, guys, and we pushed up higher. This was into the afternoon, so 11 o'clock, okay? So from here, we could see, all right, we made up our mind today. The bulls are in control. So what do we do? We take the fib from the low to the high, like this. And again, we wait for the golden zone, 50 to 786, okay? So we came here. Tag that 50 one time, guys. Okay, we tag that 50 one time. And I'm gonna show you something here. So you could go down to the lower time frames and you can use a candlestick confirmation, right? So this is a candlestick confirmation. This is an outside bar on the 50. An outside bar is a powerful signal, right? And that's why I have the Trading Wars indicators that helps me to put colors on the bar so I know when the bars are ready. So we had an outside bar here, guys, and then we rallied straight up from there. So that was beautiful for about five to 10 points. All right. And then I went on Twitter and I wanted to give something out for the community today for free. So what I did here, guys, was right here. So I call this, I call this one out. Um, so spy back down to the 50, another five points with ease. Okay. So I drew up the legs in real time for everyone today. You could see if you follow this thread all the way back. So we drew up the, the leg in real time there. So I hope some of you guys were able to bank with me on this play. So after we tagged the 50, check it out again. Let me go back down to the three minute. We came back down. All the way back down to the 50. Again, we put in another outside bar and check this out. Boom, straight into the close. So it's the afternoon leg. It's so nice, right? Because what you're doing is you're allowing the... You're allowing that chop to be your advantage because you know where you have to play from. You want to play from the golden zone. You're not, you're not trying to buy up here, right? Because you're waiting. Let it come to you because you know, hey, what? The algo could be there. The algorithm is going to, could be there. Let me see. Is it there? Well, what do we have? Outside bar. Outside bar. We have confirmation candle at the level. That's how you combine it to get an even stronger approach, right? So right here. So for those of you that have the book right here, candlestick confirmation, page 48. I wrote all about this, how you use the candles to confirm if the algo is there or not. Okay. And then we have Dane. Dane looks like he had a great day. What does brother say? I took that one for over 300 on MES. Boom. Well done, brother. I said that was a beauty. All right, guys. So that was the recap for the day on SPY. I showed you some swing trading. I showed you day trading. I showed you all the stuff we do in the Discord. As promised, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick recap on Nike, right? So Nike was uh, one of our plays in our stock rooms in our trade plan from last night. You could see Nike was a blue raindrop. So we had a long entry at 111.46. So I'm just going to show you how we're, what we did for Nike. So 111.46 is right there. So hit the candle, boom. So the first candle comes in on Nike. You could see that we gapped above. So what I do is I keep that order open in case we want to come back. So this order will stay open in case we want to come back and touch it. But in this case with Nike, we did it. So what we do instead here, guys, is um, so with Nike, I wanted to play this primarily to the bullish side um, because of the gap up, right? But you don't have to. You could, you could play it either direction as long as you get a setup. Make sure you have a setup. So just similar to SPY, if I take the high to low on the FIB right here, here's our golden zone right here. So the first leg of the day was a failure. You could see it broke, right? It didn't work. But what you do is once that leg breaks, you take it the other leg now from low to high like this. And this one on Nike was even better than SPY because this one made a new high. So 50 to 786 right there. We come back. There's your dip buy right there. So all into the golden zone right here, guys. You're loading in this zone. And then boom, we push up, we make a new high, you're out. So Nike was even better than SPY today. And that's why I like hunting for those blue raindrop plays. And that's a part of the stock room, okay? So in the, I already posted the picks for tomorrow. This way, guys, you can just focus on the ones that we know have a good chance of making good moves. And I only post the picks that I'm familiar with trading, the ones I know we can day trade and make good money, all right? So there we go. There's a recap, SPY, stocks. Um, thank you very much for your time. Hit me with a six. Did you guys enjoy the stream? Um, was it helpful to you guys? And then also with Nike, very similar to SPY, the afternoon leg here, high to low. You can see again, we tagged the 50 straight back up. So I want to make sure that you guys are using the fibs for your advantage. 
to help you make money. All right. All right, guys, as always, check me out at tradingwars.com. That's the place to be. So I put together a plan for you. If I were to go back seven years from when I first started trading and I lost 20,000 in options, if I could go back in time, this is what I would tell my, my, my prior self. And this is what I want to tell you. First thing is this. You need to track your trades. I don't care. You can trade any system, but you need to track it. And your risk to reward always needs to be positive. You need to make more money than you lose. Very simple. You want on average double your loser. So if you lose 100, you want to make 200. So if I were to go back and tell myself, I would say this, look, grab a copy of any one of these three books. It's a hundred bucks. Okay. You get one month for free in the room. Come trade live. You have a community. You have everybody there. Okay. You get the indicators for life and the scanners. Come trade live with us tomorrow. Then what I would do, start the hundred trade challenge. So every single day, log your trades. Okay. Then you're going to come here and you're going to post it in the hundred trade challenge section. All right. So here are different examples of people posting theirs here in my room. And at the end of the 100 trade challenge, meet with Rich, meet with me, and I'm going to go through your trades. I'll look at it and I'm going to say, okay, the problem is X, Y, and Z. It could be, it's different for every trader. Some traders, it's FOMO. Some traders, it's over trading. Most traders, it's over trading. Some, some traders, they take profits for small amounts and they let their losers run. Okay. And some people are just using a bad trading system. Some people are just buying breakouts every single day because they think it's, they're just seeing flags and Joes and Moes and flows. And that's fine. But once you get through this challenge, you're going to be a different person, a different trader. Commit to 100 trades. Paper trade it. I don't care what you do. Commit to it. At the end of this process, you're going to be a different person. That's what I would tell myself. All right. Or guys, look, sign up right here on the main page for the rooms if you're interested. All right. Let's go ahead now and let's do some scans for tomorrow for Trend Spider. And uh, let's see what we have on the list. What do we have on the list here? So I'm looking for blue raindrops. So right here, we have a beautiful gap up blue raindrop on Amazon. So Amazon is going to be one of our big plays going into tomorrow. I can already tell you that. And um, the, the thing here with Amazon is it gapped up, but the volume right here remained in the middle of the candle. That's pretty much what the raindrop is saying. So it's it gapped up, yeah, but it's still a little bit indecisive. And you can see the last time we had a raindrop down here, we had a massive rally. So even over here, guys, and over here, great pushes off of these raindrops. So let's see what tomorrow brings. Amazon is going to be one of the big plays on the list for tomorrow. Um, anything else on the blue raindrops here that I'm looking at? Nothing. Pfizer is another one. Okay, Pfizer has been chopping around for a while. All right, it's been chopping around for a while. But when this one wants to run, it can run. And you can see in the past, off of these blue raindrops, uh, we generally, sometimes we get chopped, but uh, generally we get some volatility. So, you know, not, not the best play. I would prefer Amazon and Google for sure. Google, I love Google. You can see the last blue raindrop we had, massive rally. The last one over here, massive sell-off. So looking for Google tomorrow to make some moves. All right, so I've already posted my setups here in the trade plans for anybody that's interested right there. Um, otherwise than that, guys, what else do we have for the scanners? Holy Grail, let's see if we have anything. ATVI, it's been playing around a little bit, you know. Holy Grail is a hard pattern to pass up because it's um, it's definitely it's definitely a good trade. Every Holy Grail is a good trade, in my opinion. So we can keep an eye on that one for sure. And then let's go look at the Nirvana, see if we have anything. Johnson & Johnson, yeah. So Johnson & Johnson, Nirvana, the last time we had one was over here. Johnson & Johnson has been a little bit hard to day trade over the last few months so i might i might put this one on break sometimes when the uh when the when the stocks starts when they stop giving me good intraday moves i put them on my blacklist and i just move on so i, I don't i don't know if i'll be trading johnson johnson i think there's a lot better opportunities out there all right guys look thank you for your time i really hope you enjoyed this class do me a favor if you want to see part three of the fibonacci mastermind leave a comment below like and subscribe i want to get your feedback on how this series went i really want i really want to know um what is it that you want to learn from me do you love the fibs do you want to learn something else do you want to talk about psychology do you, what do you want to talk about let me know in the comments below um and i th thank you again guys and look when we break 25k subscribers probably in a month or two when we break that i'll be giving away 500 to someone so make sure you're subscribed to the channel um, so you have a chance to win, all right? So I'm always going to give back, guys. Trust me. 
I always will. The more you give to people, the more you get back. Always remember that. Don't be greedy in this world. Greedy people always end up unhappy and by themselves. Always, always be giving, guys. I come from a place growing up where I didn't have anything, but I never, you know, when I, when I did, when I first started growing up, I used to think like you have to fight for yourself and, you know, you can't, if you give something to somebody that's less for you, or if somebody succeeds, that means you fail. All of those things are imprinted in my mind growing up in a tough situation in life. But as you get older and you start to learn that giving is the way of receiving, you understand what I'm saying? Giving is the way of receiving. Be, be good, treat people fairly, keep giving, the universe will take care of you. All right. Thanks very much for your time. Leave a comment below. I'll see you tomorrow.